good afternoon and welcome to Sea Fishing with CJ down on the beach. Uh, we're on a slightly different beach tonight. We're on the beach at Langley Point. Um, reason for that is Seaford Beach would have been um, too rough. It's westerly winds, but Langley is the other side of Beachy Head and so it takes a lot of sting out of the waves. Um, there is a bit of a breeze blowing, but nothing too serious. But as you can see, the sea isn't too rough. But there has been quite a big blow last night and yesterday. So hopefully the bottom's all stirred up. There's loads of natural feed, food down there. And so hopefully we're going to see some fish. There are a few storms going through. If you look over there, there's a good old thunderstorm going through there. And there's another big anvil cloud there. Uh, so I do anticipate that we will see a little bit of rain tonight. But hopefully nothing too serious and nothing too lasting. But yeah, we're down the beach and we're going to start fishing. Me and the Billy Bob dog. Hello, uh, Billy Bob. We've got some pasties for you. Yes, we have. So here we go, let's get fishing. beach early and the tide's still out to have a little wander around have a little clear up because there's a mass tangle of line there two nice little leads actually uh, but there's loads of hooks in there you don't want a little dog to pick that up uh, that would be a trip to the vet for sure so we'll have a little wander around so we can find a tackle on the beach uh, and uh, carry on fishing just walking along here I'm looking for fish and tackle um, basically The tide has actually turned and is on its way in now, so probably a bit further down would have been better. But um, we've already found two sets of mackerel feathers all tangled together. Um, yeah, the, the mackerel, the mackerel fluffing for eternity have now gone because the mackerel has gone. But uh, there will be lots of gear, crack offs and what have you, down on this on this shingle. So take a little bit of time guys, have a little wander around when you get down, especially in daylight, see if you can find any tackle left down here. Um, you know, the dog picks it up, it just gets us a bad name. 
I'm not seeing any. Let's have a look on the next bay. You can see anything showing itself. Yeah, I can't see any, but it's not to say it's not there. Oh, yeah. I don't want Billy Bob to pick it up, but I don't want anybody else's dog to pick it up. Especially you know, a hook with some bait in it. He will scavenge bits of squid and worm off the beach if he finds it. And he's not, not fussy with if it's got a hook in or not. Oh, here we go. So there we go. Another lead and some mackerel feathers there. So they would have been lying around there. A dog would have picked them up without a doubt. So, yeah, keep looking. I mean, I don't know what sort of breaking strain line that person was fishing in with, but it doesn't look very strong. I know when I lived next to the beach, I think I don't think I hardly ever bought a lead just to go and find them on the beach. Yeah, I'll keep my eyes open during the night just in case I miss something there, but uh, that's three sets of mackerel feathers in 50 yards of beach. Uh, and I imagine that that is duplicated all along here. Um, yeah. So, keep on fishing. So as usual, I've got the beach shelter up because it started to rain and it rained quite hard. And now the beach shelter's up, it's stopped. But we've got it up and ready to go. And hopefully, hopefully I've got it high enough up that we won't have to move it. But we'll, we'll see when the tide comes up when it gets up to that next level over there i'll see how much more tide there is left to run and if it's if it's got another hour or so to run we'll have to move up the beach a bit i think but, uh, yeah so here we are back on the beach but uh yeah i'm quite quietly confident when i was setting up there was a seal just out over there with his head out of the water looking at me quite quizzically so that's one of two things. It's a good sign because the seal's here because there's fish here, or it's a bad sign that the seal's here and the fish are all going to be very sheepish about being out there. But the water's very coloured, so um, I don't know how, how aware of seals the fish are. Maybe hear them, I don't know. Um, but the sun is going down, it's getting dark, some quite spectacular clouds going on up there. Might actually put the camera on for a bit and just do a slow-mo or speed it up of the clouds coming over because that's actually quite special, that. So yeah, let's do that. Okay, so if you um, watch my Sea Fishing with CJ channel, you'd see what my secret is to a successful fishing trip. But for those that you don't watch it, the secret is a cup of tea and a piece of cake. And it's guaranteed as soon as you start drinking into that tea and biting into that cake, you'll get a bite. Guarantee. So, kettle's boiling. So there we go, cup of tea, piece of cake. We'll start seeing some bites now, guarantee it, before I finish this cake. There we go, told you, cup of tea and a piece of cake. 
and we're into fish already. So. First fish of the night. Guarantee, cup of tea and a piece of cake and you're in the fish. And the first fish of the night, because it's been very quiet, schooly and a pouting. Happy days. And I've still got half a cake and a cup of tea to drink yet. Beauty, a proper beauty. I do love bass. And look at the size of this pouting. It's a monster. And away! So not a, bl not a blank dance. <laughs> right, so we've had a bit of weed to pick off, which I've got off now. Uh, we're fishing with ragworm. Two ragworm to a hook, two hook snood, uh, two hook dropper, clip down. Um, so, bottom hook clips into a Gemini, and then second hook clips into a Cascade, uh, and then they're about, I know, about a foot long droppers. Uh, size two hooks, and we're using some rather fine rather fine ragworm, courtesy of Tony's Tackle. So we bake them on a needle. Bake them on a needle, where's my baking needle? There it is. And I like to bake them from the tail towards the head, so that it means that the heads are near the hooks. So you can get rid of some of the straggly bit, and then thread the needle through the worm from the tail, One. Just be a bit careful with ragworm, they will nip you. I think with these um these cultivated ones, it's not such a vicious nip, but, oh, but I think the big ones, the, the big king rag that they dig, they can give you quite a, a nosh. Um, I pricked the side of this a couple of times, threading through, but that's not a problem because it just means there's more juice soaking out. And then a few bits of worm on here still, but it's, again, not a problem because they'll all go to make up the bait. So they just got the line. Um, this needle's got a little recess in one end. So you put the, the tip of your hook into that recess and then you just push it around, around the bend, feed it over the, the hook knot. Hook knot's quite good because it's what helps keep it all up the line. Got a little stop here to make sure it's nice and compressed near the hook. So that's the first one done. Oh, might only put one on there. This is a nice big boy, big, bat, big fat boy. Again, put the tip of the hook into that little recess in the end of the needle, and then just feed the worm up round the bend of the hook. You need to keep it fairly taut so it doesn't push the hook off the recess. And there you go. Two baited up snoods. Clip the first one into the to the Gemini. So that's clipped into there. And then you've got this little cascade little tag there which hooks in the second hook. The second hook has gone a spring so there's tension on it. So clipped into the into the uh, 
cascade, and then there's a spring just below the swivel there to keep that nice and taut, so it stays locked together for the cast. Make sure that the breakaway wires are set with a bit of tension on them, because we don't want it snapping out, particularly with the weed that we're getting here. Give my hands a wipe, and then we'll go and whack this out. <sighs> Well, there you go. Cup of tea, piece of cake. Cannot odds it. And the beauty of it is we've had all that excitement. We've had a bass and a really nice size pout in. And I've still got half my cake and two thirds of my cup of tea. The beauty is I, have, I use a thermal mug. That's another secret. Because I guarantee as soon as you get a cup of tea in your hand you, and a piece of cake, you do get a bite. And in the past, that used to result in cold tea, but now the thermal cup has kept it nice and warm. So happy days. I hope you've enjoyed this little snip, snippet of what I do to improve my catch rate. Um, trust me, it works. If you watch my fishing channel, you will see quite often when I'm out on the boat, guarantee, as soon as I get a cup of tea in my hand, I get a fish on. So that's a, for off the beach, it's not a bad sized dogfish off the beach, lovely markings on it. Really dark bars. Right, it's gonna wrap you around so you can't wrap your skin around my hand and take the skin off. There you go. Barred marking on it. Gonna rebate this up and uh, get it back out there. All right, we just wind this one in. It's been out for a while. I've not noticed any bites on it, but that doesn't mean to say there hasn't been. Yeah, got another couple of fish on here. There you go. So a brace of dogfish. A pair of them, little ones, smaller ones this time. So we've got a pair of dogfish this time. So that's three dogfish so far tonight. Brace of dogfish winding around each other. And uh, let's get them back. <coughs> right, get these baited back up and get them back out. Well, there was definitely something rattling on this left-hand rod, so let's wind it in and see. Underneath or over that one? Over the top of it. I don't know how that's happened. Over the top of it. Yep. What have we got? We've got something here. You think it's another dogfish? Oh no. Dogfish. Is another very big pouty. Monster. Big pouty for the beach anyway. Small for the boat, but. Very pretty fish, very pink and silvery. Let's uh, get him back. 
Swim, pouting, swim. And away. Yay. One thing though, we choose to come. back out first because this is a good one to go back. And then we'll get this in. Well it was going bonkers but I've got a camera on it now it's stopped. Something there, isn't I don't feel like, oh, I say, I don't feel like there's anything on there, but there's a little tug then. Oh, there's the lead dragging on the bottom. No. Nothing. Nothing there. I am surprised. I thought there was something going on there. Yeah, I think that's got to be the right end rod. Oh, jolly good, it's raining. Whoa! 
a dogfish, a little tiny one. <laughs> Very small dogfish. So, one tiny little dogfish. Well, I'm just starting to think about packing up and then my right hand rod started going again. So let's just see if this develops into. If we, uh, if it develops into something, then uh, we'll land it and then pack up, I think. Right, it is pouring down now. Um, the right hand rod is going again. But you know what? <laughs> I'm not going out there until it stops. Well, we've had a cracking night, it has to be said. I've lost count of how many dogfish we had, it's even nine or ten. Uh, I've had a bass, albeit a small one, and two great big jumbo pouting. So it's been steady and it's been quite busy at times. But the tide is now on the turn. Um, it has started to rain, it's waiting for this rain to stop, and then when the rain stops, we're going to wind the rods in. They're both, they've both got fish on, I think. Um, and then we're going to call it a night because um, one of the beauties, I mean, I don't like this time of the year generally because the clocks have gone forward and it's dark in the evenings, but it does mean that you can have quite a good night session on the beach and be finished by 10 o'clock rather than fishing through to the early hours. So that's pretty good. So the rain has just stopped now, just about stopped. So let's get these rods in, let's get them untackled and let's pack up and go home. Um, I'll film again once we see the if we have got fish on them. Um, but other than that, I'll say good night and God bless. See you on the next one. Hopefully out on the boat. Um, this weekend coming of massive tides. So I don't know if I want to go out in a boat with a you know seven meter tides. It's not it's not pleasurable and it's hard fishing. And you never generally catch anything because you can't you can't get your weights on the bottom. But we'll see. The following weekend, hopefully, hopefully, if the weather's good, the cod competition that should have taken place this last Sunday, but it didn't because of the weather, uh, will go ahead and we will get out with a number of boats and we'll all go out fishing together, which will be quite fun. So anyway. Right, I'm gonna keep this running then while we get these rods in and if we get anything, it will be on film. Well, there's nothing tugging on here at the moment. <laughs> we have some salad and some bare hooks. So there was there was fish there. Probably because I left them because of the rain, they uh, managed to get off. Put them on. Let's see this other rod.
And this is blanked as well. Oh well. Definitely time to pack up for the night uh, and head for home. Thanks very much for being with us. Hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. It has been fun. Um, till the next time. Keep on fishing. <laughs>